Thank you for choosing Multiball. If you're watching this video, it means you've decided to purchase one of the most advanced sports gaming systems out there. In this onboarding video, I'm going to be taking you step by step to the different forms to use it, manage it and maintain it. So we're going to start with the system itself. If you watched all the installation videos and you did a neat installation, you should be ending up with a nicely set up multiball. Every time you start it up, it's going to come into the main menu. The main menu is the hub where everything happens. I'm going to show you later how to customize this, how to upload your own logo, how to select games that you want to display or not. But for now, we're going to focus on the ways how to use this. So the main menu is always enabled by touch. You have three different uh, categories. In our case, we have one extra custom folder called showcase. I'm going to show that later. Right now we have education, games and training. You always use the, the menu just by tapping as you would normally with a touchpad, but you can also throw objects. If you want to select a game, you can tap it twice. One, two, and that will start the game. Alternatively, you can also hold it and it will start the game also. So the good thing is, Multiball detects any object completely unrelated to size, shape, color, or even shininess. So you can take big balls, like for example this here, or you can also take small balls, like a tennis ball. The system detects anything with 2.5 centimeters in diameter if you have a high resolution system or up to four centimeters if you have a normal system. This for example is about 5.5, six centimeters. So if I throw it here, it just gets detected. And the beauty is it gets detected really fast. You can also use your hands to play the game. You can also use a pool noodle or you can also use stuffed animals. So it really doesn't matter what you use because the system basically takes anything that would just interfere with the wall in real time and make that an impact. This is also why it's very important to have a flat wall because if you have any objects interfering with the sensor grid, it's obviously gonna trigger. So most of the games have a timer. So there's a certain round end. And this is also where our menu pops up. You see this little side here, there's a little sign on the side this will always bring up the context menu. So whenever during a game, you press this here, it's gonna bring this up. And if you press it again, you have all your game controls. Also this area, if a round finish, it's gonna pop up easier because most of the time, once a round finish, you might wanna change the game or go into the settings. But normally you can always access this with this little, little button there by just tapping it once and tapping it twice. Here you have four different things to select. We can adjust the volume. We can resume, which just brings us back to exactly the same situation with the timer. You can restart if you want to restart the round, or you can exit the game to go to a new game. Apart from tracking the front wall at very, very high precision, we also track player movements. So you see up there, there's a motion tracking module. It's very, very high frequency and very precise. So for example, if we take a certain game like, for example, Quick Feet, this system will detect my position and determine exactly how fast I move and I can use it for very exciting gameplay. Most of the games actually play with both elements. So the most fun games have something where you need to run around on court and at the same time have to hit certain things so it makes it very exciting. So if you're not being detected, you just stand in front of the, of the system, you move back and forth, and then the system will pick you up. Right now you see this system is picking me up. It goes up to two players. So some of the two player systems actually track both people. This game is actually quite fun. I need to react really quick. Three, oh. two, one, go. And now I have to run around. And as you see, it's pretty precise and fast. The motion tracking works most of the time, not like a mirror, but basically like walking into the screen. So it takes a little bit of time to get used to it. And if you're not being tracked or if you run out, it will normally track you back in. If not, it's going to give you a dialogue where you have to move, move back, move around a little bit, and you're going to be tracked again. Another way to use your system, especially for the players, is to download our Limp.io app. And... Bop, bop, bop. 
First of all, this is where you can find all your systems. So it's going to show you a map with the multi-ball systems around you, and you can use it to activate your system. This lets you log in as a player, not as an operator, to have fun and then have all the data on your system and also show up in the leaderboard. So you just go scan QR code and you're going to move it over here. And it's going to scan the QR code and it's going to log me in. So right now the system is going to switch over and know that I'm going to be playing. We've talked about the hardware and the use of the system. I'm now going to show you one of the most important parts to make the best value with your multiball system. This is the multiball admin. If you go to this URL, multiball-admin.net, you can log in with the credentials that you received after purchasing your system. Note, there's also some systems out there that already have an own process to acquire their password, but normally you will be sent your login credentials with the purchase confirmation. You fill in your password, you also have a forgot password process and so on. This brings you to the dashboard. This is intended for, let's say, a reception or if you're at a hotel or in a sports club for very, very easy access. This is the main four functions to use the system. You can start it, meaning you give access to people playing on the system. You can stop it. You can select the menu so people can select their games and you can switch to the screensaver and later also decide if this locks the system. I'm going to now walk you through the different parts. When you log in, please be aware that there's different users. You have a gamer and you have an admin. The admin is maintaining the system and managing all the aspects of it. The gamer, that is the user that if nobody logs in, your system will be playing on. So this is also what shows up in the lead upwards. If you go to pick game, you can select all the different games and functionalities. This also includes going back to the menu or selecting any game that you might want to have. A screensaver is also a game. You can make your own folders and create your own subfolders. And you also have the settings here, which is reboot in case you run into any problems, shut down, volume plus, volume minus. Please keep in mind, the system is normally always connected to the internet and the PC is always running. If you shut down, you will need to detach the system from the electricity and plug it back in so it starts up again because then it's in sleep mode. Reboot will do the same thing, but the system needs to be connected to the internet for all this functionality to work. A very easy way to see if your system is actually connected to the internet is our health page. This is also very crucial for any form of maintenance. If you go here on that little button, you see a overall status of your system. You see your name, you see your product ID and your MAC address in case you need to work on your network. And you see the software status. In this case, we received all necessary updates. You see the system status. In this case, we are running a session right now, meaning somebody's playing on the system. You see the display status, meaning a display is connected. Please note, if you switch off your projector, this will obviously turn red. There's still a projector connected, but it's not powered on, so the system cannot detect it. The sensors, which mean nothing is blocking the sensors. Otherwise, this will show up and say, hey, something's blocking my sensors and the system license. All multiball systems require a license. If you click manage subscription, you can access the subscription page, buy a subscription, update your billing and do whatever you want to do um, to maintain it. But please keep in mind, also our support will only be available if the license is active. For this, the system needs to be connected to the internet. So it's highly recommended that the system is always online. If you ever run into problems, you can create a support ticket. For this, the system should be online as well because the system will also send very important information to our tech people to find out exactly what might cause the issue. You will receive a dialogue if some of these elements here are not on. So we highly encourage you, if the system is not online, it makes very little sense to send us a support ticket. If your display is not connected, 
makes very little sense because we, we can't really check it. Same goes for the sensors. If the sensors are blocked, we highly recommend to check out what might be causing the issue first. In this way, this is a very straightforward process. You give us all your information. You can describe the issue. You can also upload any pictures and send us a support ticket. The first place you should go at when you receive your system and you log into the admin for the first time is the systems page. This will show one big line for you where you can set all the settings for your system. This is not just very convenient, but it also helps your daily operations. You can select an image. That are the images that are shown in our Limp IO app. So this is highly interesting if you want to attract more customers to your location. You can give your system a title. You can decide if you want to have it in self-locking mode or in free play. Free play means the system is always on and you can access the menu. Self-locking mode means once the screensaver goes on, you cannot access it unless an admin or somebody at reception switches it back on either with a session or with selecting the menu. You have a default game after sessions uh, end. So this means if you're, for example, running a family entertainment center and you're saying, hey, I want to have um, a certain game pop up all the time or I want to go back to the menu, that's easily doable here. You have a preferred language. In this case, we have more than 20 languages that you can choose from. This also goes for the menu and the games and all the dialogues that you see. This is highly important. You can enable automatic updates, which we highly recommend. You can opt in for beta test. This means that you get certain games even before they're released. This here is very interesting because it's a safe update time. Let's say you are a family entertainment center. You obviously don't want the updates to run during your peak hours. So you can select a certain time where these updates run in the background and make sure that nobody's playing at, let's say, one o'clock in the morning. Keep in mind, for this, the system always needs to be online, meaning you should not switch off the system with an automatic power plug. You should not be switching off the system each day you close up shop. It should always be online. What you can do is do the same thing with a projector, for example, or any form of other video. If you're using an LED wall, you would be switching off the LED wall, but the computer itself and the console stay online. You still have the IP address here. You have the MAC address. And this is very important because you will need to provide some open ports if you're using the system with a firewall. There's a very extensive um, article about this on the knowledge base. It will make it much easier if you set that up right away. You have the um, game ranking settings, which you can start here. You have the display settings, so you can check if your display is running on the right resolution. And you have the pay to play. In this case, the pay to play is not enabled. Pay to play means that you can connect this with your existing payment provider or in-house, let's say RFID chip system. So you can allow people for a certain fee or with a certain permission to only use the system if you allow it or if they paid. Another very handy element of your system is the analytics function. You have the normal analytics and you have a separate analytics tool, which is called the detailed analytics. This lets you select all the different days, see all your most favorite games, see how many times they were played and go really deep into the data to find out what is most successful, what works well and what actually drives your footfall and revenue. Another highly interesting part is our asset flips. There's a detailed documentation on our website and on the knowledge base how to use this tool. Basically, what it lets you do is take any of the existing games that is already within an asset flip system and edit all the graphical elements, functions, music, or whatever you want to do to your liking. This is very, very complex, but extremely easy to use. Our game guys came up with a fantastic process. You just log in. It takes a little bit of time to load. You can select exactly the graphics that you want to change. You can change the music. You can change how long the rounds run and all these elements. And then once you've done, you can select if you want to use that system or that custom game 
and put it on your own system. This is free of charge to use it and create all your asset flips. Once you start putting it on the system, a small fee occurs. Last part is our info page. This is where you find additional information about your system. This is tutorials, how to use the admins. There's our link to our online knowledge base. There's even explanations videos on how to do the maintenance, service and support and more multi-ball product information. There's also an API documentation. If you're an advanced user, uh, let's say a hotel that wants to integrate this into your data structure, there is a documentation for that. And then you can run this with your facility management or operational platform as you like. So this was our overview of the admin page. As I said, I highly recommend that you really look deep into this. This runs on every browser. You can have it on your phone. You can share it with your team and it provides big value for anybody using a multiball and you will love it once you start using it. We highly recommend to make sure that everybody in your team is also fully accustomed with this. So please share this video with them or go back to the info site and watch the tutorials for anybody that has to interact with it. So now that you saw how to properly manage and optimize your multiball, let's get to the last part and this is maintenance. The system is pretty much maintenance free. The only thing you need to do is ensure two things. First of all, for the projector to sometimes clean the filters. We highly recommend laser projectors. If you're not getting a laser projector, you might also need to change light bulbs. With these laser projectors, every half a year changing the filter will be absolutely sufficient depending on your dust situation. The other element is that the lower sensor bar sometimes might have debris or something falling in. Let's say you have a plaster wall where there's little paint chips coming down. If somebody hits it with a very hard ball or with a tennis racket by accident, little paint chips can fall into the sensor. So what you want to make sure of is every time you have a malfunction or the system tells you that a sensor is blocked, you want to check what's actually down there. That's very easy. We just use a little vacuum cleaner. You can just blow it out. Most of the time, it's just a very simple fix. Keep in mind, 95% of all our service tickets, it is something stuck in the sensors. So there's a little piece of foam from a foam ball that fell off or a little piece of confetti from the last party that's blocking the sensor. The system will tell you that in the admin, but most of the time it's also very easy to miss this. So just very, very clearly check that this is all going well. Apart from that, Internet connection can sometimes be an issue. If you're reconfiguring your network, for example, make sure you open the right ports for the firewall because our system is constantly connected to the internet for updates. So that is also something that you want to make sure you have a full check on. Apart from that, we have the knowledge base, which you see in this link down here. This is where there's a growing collection of articles for any problem that you might run into. Most of these are very easy to fix. If you still go into a problem, as we mentioned in the admin area, send us a support ticket and we'll be right back with you really, really quickly. Thank you so much for your trust. I'm very much looking forward to see your names pop up in the leaderboards. And if you have any questions, reach out to us, check our extensive webpage, the knowledge base, or just let us know if you see any feature that you would like to see to come to our platform. From Munich, thank you so much from the Multiball team and see you soon.